Hey there guys, today we're going to be comparing two mini PCs with each other, that being the GMK Tech M7 Pro versus the Max Tang FP750. The reason I'm comparing these two systems is because I want to see what the actual performance difference is going to be between the Ryzen 7 7735HS versus the far more obscure Ryzen 7 Pro 6950H. See, on paper, these two systems are actually very identical to each other. The 7735HS is effectively just a 6800H, and the 6800H is pretty much identical to the 6950H. Specs-wise, we're only looking at some slight clock differences in terms of the CPU and the GPU. So these two systems are going to be configured at the same TDP of 25 watts. So these two systems are going to be configured to the same exact TDP of 54 watts and we're going to see how they compare to each other in a selection of games. But do keep in mind that there are more differences between the two systems than just the exact specifications of the CPU in there. For example, the GMK Tech has dual 2.5 gigabit LAN ports versus just the single LAN port that is on the Max Tang system. Though the Max Tang system does have two HDMI ports instead of having an HDMI and a display port. And while it doesn't have any back facing USB 4 type C port, it does have a USB 3.0 port type a and a single 2.0 port versus the two 2.0 ports that are on the gmk tech system so there's definitely some configuration decision differences there and of course the biggest differentiating factor is the fact that you do get the oculink port in the front on the gmk tech system but when it comes down to raw performance i want to see if there's actually any meaningful difference between these two so i want to start off with the games that showed the biggest difference and the the first one here is Rainbow Six Siege running with the very high graphic settings and we are using FSR at the ultra quality preset. And this one's interesting because we see a pretty noticeable win for the 6950H on the GMK Tech M7 Pro. Even though they're running at the same TDP, clearly the system with the 7735HS is reaching some noticeably higher temperatures and that could be affecting the performance here. But it's interesting because we're seeing that both the GPU on either system is locked at their maximum speed, though there are some noticeable CPU performance differences, at least in terms of clock speed, but it seems like the higher clocks on the 7735HS did not translate to better performance. Now the next game on the list is Red Dead Redemption 2, running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR with the performance preset. And this is another one that showed some pretty massive and very consistent differences between the two systems. The 6950H system ended up giving a FPS average that was pretty much always at at least 50 over a three run average while the 7735HS was giving a pretty noticeably lower result in both the 1% lows and the FPS average. Though you will see that the system with the 7735HS is running into some pretty high temperatures so that might have actually affected the performance here. Though again the GPU clock isn't exactly fluctuating all that much. Now the next game that I took a look at it is a lot more modern it is black myth wukong running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using fsr at a very aggressive setting it is at 60 percent render resolution and we are using frame generation in this one the performance between the two systems was very close but consistently the 7735hs was coming out on top by about one to two frames at most not really enough to make a huge difference but it is a consistent thing that was happening here so a pretty big contrast in comparison to the last two titles that we took a look at. Though this is pretty significant since this is one of the most modern titles that we're taking a look at today. Now, I also did take a look at Counter-Strike 2 running with a built-in benchmark map you can find on the workshop. Keep in mind though that this isn't exactly going to be indicative of the performance that you'll get on an online match. Since this is offline, the CPU has to do a lot more rendering here. But this is essentially a worst case scenario. And more importantly, it at least lets us consistently compare the two systems 
systems here. And again, over three runs consistently, the 6950H was just giving better performance, specifically on those 1% lows. So a very interesting result where it seems like they're either really close to each other or the 6950H ends up having a pretty noticeable lead, specifically in 1% lows. And the next title that I took a look at is Tiny Tina's Wonderland running with the low in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR at the quality preset and this is another title that was consistently showing a difference between the two where the 6950H was giving a pretty noticeable lead in the FPS average though the 1% lows were essentially identical between the two that 8 FPS difference in terms of FPS average does actually lead to a noticeable improvement considering that that means that the FPS very rarely ever dipped below 60 though I suspect that again the temperature difference between the two systems here was starting to cause some issues. I also took a look at Returnal running on both systems here with the lowest in-game graphic settings and we are using FSR and in this one we got pretty much identical performance in both the FPS average and the 1% lows. This really isn't all that surprising considering that Returnal is almost always one of the more difficult benchmarks that we run on here and it's really going to push these systems to their knees and considering that hardware wise they're very similar i'm not surprised that this is the result that we ended up with though again there is a pretty massive difference in terms of temperature between the two i also took a look at guardians of the galaxy running with the lowest in-game graphic settings and we are using fsr at the ultra quality preset and this is another one that ended up being pretty much identical in terms of the performance both the one percent lows and the fps average were identical after three runs so there is no meaningful difference in terms of a title like this. And the same can be said for Batman Arkham Knight here running with the high graphic settings on both systems the performance was pretty much identical. Both gave a great result though again the temperature difference is one of the biggest factors here in terms of any kind of difference but hardware wise both of them pretty much gave the exact same result in terms of performance and the same can be said for mountain blade 2 banner lord running with the medium graphics settings on both systems we pretty much ended up exactly the same a one fps difference just cannot really be counted as a win it's more of a margin of error kind of thing so yet another title where they're essentially the exact same in terms of performance and for the sake of this video not turning into just just me parroting the exact same thing. Also in Rise of the Tomb Raider here, we got the exact same level of performance and that holds true for pretty much all of the other games that I tested. So really in the beginning, I kind of showed you the most interesting ones, the ones that showed any kind of meaningful difference. But for the most part, in the vast majority of the titles, they're going to perform effectively the same. So after running both systems through these benchmarks, it becomes very clear that they're very close to each other. The Max Tang system here, which uh, one of the letters ended up falling out there. But between these two systems, in most cases, you're going to find that they perform practically identically. Which this makes sense. If you look at what the actual hardware is, it's very similar. The only differences are minor clock speed adjustments between the two. But in a few surprising cases, the 6950H ended up winning, and not just winning by a small margin by a pretty noticeable margin of course of the 20 games that i tested those were the only ones that had that big of a gap but it was something that was there and i have not tested every game out in the market so there very well could be more games that show that big of a difference but whether or not they're even relevant to your gaming experience is really up in the air now one thing i could say for sure though is that i would take the gmk tech system any day of the week in comparison to this because of the fact that this system consistently was running cooler and quieter while giving identical or better performance all around it's a better system and while on the max tank system i do actually really like the construction using metal on the sides the glossy plastic on the top not the biggest fan of but it at least works but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because the GMK tech is just an all-around better system. Now really what it all comes down to is price and that's really just going to depend a lot on at what time and in which shop 
you are looking at these two systems. But if they're even remotely close to each other in price, I would really just go with the GMK Tech. You don't need to get the M7 Pro. You can go with the M7 because as this proves, if there's no noticeable difference in most titles between a 7735HS and a 6950H, then the 6850 is going to perform pretty much identically to this. That said though, that does mean that systems that are starting to come down in price, where I've seen some 7735HS systems down even into the $300 price point, usually around $350 to $375 price point, it really starts to become very competitive competitive because you are looking at comparable performance between these two systems and if you can get a $200 savings on something with a 7735HS or a 5800H or any of these APUs that are based off of Zen 3 Plus with RDNA 2 graphics, you could be looking at some pretty major savings while giving you a pretty major uplift in terms of performance in comparison to a lot of the Zen 2 and Zen 3 based APUs. As unfortunately those are just stuck with Vega and Vega is not even getting driver updates anymore, let alone game optimization or access to new features. So I definitely recommend you check out the M7 Pro down below. But always keep an eye out on what is going on in the market because sometimes there will be some crazy deals on hardware that is just a little bit worse. But I'll catch you guys in the next one.